another little note that may find its way into a hint video. These cable guides that I had made, you probably can't see, but they're cut in half this way. This back part is glued to the spar. This front piece is held on with a screw, so if, if I ever need to get in here, um, there could be a, an access panel here on the fabric, or um, I can just cut through the fabric at a later date and then put a reinforcement patch over it if I need to. But the point is, if I need to get in here, I could take this screw out, pull this the top part of this block off, and get to the <clears throat> and get to the cable. The other thing was I wanted to make note of is I I tried to keep my blocks, the cable guide blocks, relatively close to the various fittings that run along the spar just to make sure that the cables are suspended with the blocks out away from the metal components, the, the metal fittings and straps. If these blocks were way back here somewhere and the next set of blocks were way down the other end of the spar, there'd be a lot of free cable in right where the fitting is and there may be some interference either on a nut or a bolt or something like that. So. It may be a good idea to keep these blocks, put some extra blocks if needed, relatively close to all your spar fittings just to make sure that the cable is held out away from the fittings and uh, they won't uh, end up rubbing on something they shouldn't rub. I'm getting ready to cover the wings and I figured I should do some videotaping uh, prior to actually putting the fabric on. Now, as with most things with these DVDs, um, the material in the DVDs are actually, the time that has passed between some of the material has been quite a while. So I'm gonna rehash some things here that may have already been covered um, earlier in the DVD with the uh, tail surfaces and the fuselage or whatever else that was covered prior to covering the wings. But, that was such a long time ago that I don't recall at the moment what I may or may not have talked about, so I'm gonna kind of rehash it here. So here is uh, one of the wings. The other wing I've already covered and that worked out very well, so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and document with this wing what I had done. So obviously prior to cover, you wanna make sure that you have everything in the wing that needs to be in the wing, anything that um, you won't be able to have access to once the fabric is on needs to be in place now or at least in place before you put the fabric on the other side. So what I like to do obviously I've got my control cables ran, I've got my cable guides in place, I've got the cables run through the wing and coiled up in a bag. All your various cross supports, your braces and stuff, give them a good shake. Make sure that they're solid and they're glued. The other wing, when I had brought it in from outside, I found out that one of these supports had come loose. It had, it had come loose down at this end and I had to re-glue it. So just make sure that everything is tight and in place. You can remove any cobwebs, dust, debris. Pulleys are in place, cables are ready to go, the cable guides, I don't know if these are cable guides, but these uh, cable keepers, for lack of a better word, are in place. And like I said, just make sure that your, your supports are good all the way around the wing. Everything is good and tight and strong. Cables are in place, they are, they are brought up to tension. They're keyed, or they're pinned with the cotter key. The edge is on, which is always a good thing. Where the cables cross, I've got these uh, tie wraps that I use to keep the cables from rubbing against each other. I know that's out of focus, but with this camera, there's nothing I can do about that, except maybe back up. Hardware is in. AN hardware. Make sure that if you mock stuff up using uh, standard bolts, make sure you swap them out for the flight hardware when you, uh, when you do your final assembly prior to fabric. Make sure you have your minimum thread. Make sure you use lock nuts. And again, uh, everything is pinned and cotter keyed. And uh, this turnbuckle is actually 
I use the clips, and the clips are on the bottom side, but all the turnbuckles have, have their clips on them. There are the clips here on this turnbuckle. There's one right there. So just verify that everything is in place. These are the, uh, instead of using the, the rib lacing, I borrowed this idea from Mr. Mike Kai. This is just a leftover cap strip that's glued across to each rib. Make sure that those are still in place and glued. These are my uh, custom made supports for the jury struts. And again, uh, the aircraft hardware. Large washers, because it's a wood structure, you want a nice large bearing surface. On this side, you don't need any kind of a wood washer because the metal structure itself acts as the washer. That's why you don't see big wood washers on, on this kind of stuff because it's, it's metal to metal. The, the strap itself acts as the washer. So that's that. This wing, from what I could tell, is, is ready to go. So I'm going to put on the, this is the bottom of the wing, obviously. I'm going to put the fabric on the bottom first. What I prefer to do when I get ready to lay out the fabric is to unroll the fabric first before doing any gluing. Unroll it onto the wing and um, figure out how long you need it to be and then cut it to the length that you need it and then roll it right back up onto the, uh, the fabric roll. That keeps it from um, getting dirty and it keeps it from getting any kind of creases in it. After I've rolled it out, cut it, and then I roll it back up onto the, uh, the cardboard tube that it came off of, I'll go around and do the, uh, the gluing, the perimeter gluing. <clears throat> and then, um, then I'll come back and unroll the fabric again onto the wing and start the gluing process. So after putting the Echo Bond, the Stuart's, Stuart's Echo Bond glue around the perimeter, I unrolled the piece of fabric that I had cut and rolled it back out onto the wing. And like I said, I, I like to unroll it, cut it to length, and then roll it back up again uh, just to keep it off of the floor, keep it clean, keep it from getting creased if I tried to fold it and that kind of thing. So now I've got the fabric on the wing. I've got the perimeter glue already on. Of course I left um, a good amount of overhang on each end so that I know that I'm not going to come up short. This particular fab fabric um, is the, uh, I got this fabric from Super, Super Flight. Their fabric is uh, a little bit wider than most. I believe their fabric comes in either 71 or 72 inch rolls which is perfect for our uh, peat and pole wing width. And I bought their lightweight 1.7 ounce fabric. Um, for this particular type of aircraft, you really don't need anything heavier than that, and it just adds unnecessary weight to the entire airplane. So I'm gonna start going around and uh, gluing this, tacking this fabric down into place and trimming it and getting it ready for its initial shrink. Here I've got the bottom fabric on the, let's see, this is the right wing, and I'm getting ready to put the top fabric on. One thing I wanted to point out was the, uh, the way that I decided to do the interface between the, the bottom fabric that comes around the leading edge and the top fabric that overlaps it. I thought aesthetically it would look better if my trim tape ended right about where the edge of the plywood is. So I took my uh, my trim tape, divided that in half, um, which ends up being about two inches or so, because I can't, I can't remember if I'm using three inch or four inch tape. But anyway, uh, so that tape would sit right here, so the edge of the tape is even with the edge of the plywood. And I marked the line down the length of the leading edge, representing the halfway point of that tape. Um, and then I'll come back, uh, and I'll, sh I'll show you when I actually do it. Um, you crease the, the trim tape down the center like I've done for the other trim tapes in the other videos. And then you line that crease up along this pencil line and that will, that will put the tape center on the overlap. Um, 
So this line also represents where the top fabric is, will end. So the top fabric will come over the top and it will end at this line. It will overlap to this line and stop. Then the trim tape will go down and be centered over that line, which will center it over the uh, overlap of the fabric and it will put it roughly on the edge of this plywood. So that should trim off everything really nice. I've got the glue drying or tacking. And once it's, uh, once it's done tacking up, I'll go ahead and put it on. I'll just come around here to the wing tip. The wing tip on this side is a little, little difficult to do. The bottom is not so bad. You can see I've got the fabric on it already along the bottom here. But when you come across the top, as I found on the other wing, with this curve here, this curve here, um, and you're trying to get this fabric to come across and lay nice around all these compound curves, I found it best just to stop it short and then make a separate patch to do this corner. And I'll, uh, I'll get to that here when I, when I get to that point with the fabric. I'm assuming I'll have this. I'll have to do that with this one. That's how I had to do the other wing, and um, I'm going to do this wing the same, if nothing else, just so they'll they'll sort of match. And then here's the rest of the wing tip. Along the the uh, aileron bay, I'll kind of do the same thing that I had done for the wing tip. I'll uh, the bottom fabric is brought all the way around up to the top. This is all fabric here. The top fabric, rather than wrapping it all the way around, if I bring the top fabric down, then I'll have to put my trim tape here. And I didn't want that trim tape visible on the bottom here. So this gets wrapped all the way up. The top fabric will come down and stop halfway. I will draw my pencil line across here when the glue is dry. And I'll bring the fabric down to that halfway point, And then I'll put my trim tape straddling that line at the midpoint across and that will be hidden behind the aileron. Now the sides are not as bad because I bring the, the fabric up to here and then this top fabric will get overlapped down to this edge but this will be a continuance of the finishing tape that will cover the rib stitching here, this rib stitching finishing tape will continue to come down and it will come all the way down here and uh, seal off this seam. And that I'm okay with. So that's how I'm going to do the edge here and the edge here. If you can imagine the top fabric on, this is the bottom fabric that comes all the way up. If the top fabric is on and it comes all the way down, then that, that uh, rib stitch trim that's on the fabric will come all the way across and it will continue down here and and wrap around this here and then this one will just go down the center and be hidden by the aileron something I've discovered over the various times that I've dealt with fabric putting fabric over the trailing edges, the scalloped trailing edges. If you cut the fabric back, you know, I had, originally I had all this fabric hanging over the trailing edge and I cut it back to just about an inch and a half past the, uh, the trailing edge here. If I do that and I also cut up into the arch area, leave enough fabric intact so that you can wrap the the trailing edge but if I if I cut these slits in the middle of the high spot of the of the scallop you can see you don't want to cut it here you want to cut it in the inside the arch and if I do that at each one it relieves the, the tension when I start to put some heat on this to stick it down it relieves the tension on this flat part and it makes putting this fabric down along the leading edge a lot easier. And the other thing that I had done was basically just lay the fabric flat and come around with my iron and just tack it around this very outer edge just real quick, just come through here and tack this down and then come back 
and start pulling it around and, and tacking it and that seems to work really well especially with these slits in it like it is I can pull this around and tack it in place with the iron really easily and then of course I'll come back and trim all this off here's the wing after uh, gluing on the top fabric and trimming it this is ready for the final gluing I'll come back and I'll glue down through all of the joints where the top fabric interfaces with the bottom fabric or the uh, bare wood framing of the wing itself. Now you may notice that I have not technically shrunk this top fabric at all, but yet it, it almost looks like it has a little bit of a shrink to it. And I guess it kind of does because what I like to do when I get the fabric down over top of the underneath fabric. I, I put the glue down and leave it. I don't wipe it off. I put the glue down, let it tack up, and I bring the fabric down over top. What I like to do is come back with the iron and I'll, I'll come through and I'll tack it down a little bit at a time and then I'll come back after I get the entire wing done like that. I'll come back and I'll run the iron across the entire glue joint. The reason I like to do that is is because for one thing it takes out the wrinkles of the fabric and it kind of almost presses or reheats the fabric down into that bottom layer of glue. And I like to do that with the heat because I know that there's a good solid contact between the fabric and the underlying glue. When I come back with the top final coat of glue, which I'm getting ready to do now, this is the coat of glue that you put on and then you come back and wipe it with a rag and you're supposed to, in theory, that will drive the glue down through the fabric. However, if the fabric is a little bit loose or if there's some wrinkles in it or some creases and you try to glue down through it with a rag, I don't know if that you'll press those creases down into the glue or you'll press out the, the uh, air bubble for lack of a better word. I don't know. But I just like to come by with um, the iron, with the, the small iron, with all of these overlapping glue joints and just work, work the fabric smooth and make sure it gets heated and pressed down into the underlying glue. That way when I come back with my final glue, I know that this is a good solid contact between here and what's underneath it. And I've done that everywhere around the entire wing. Um, I just came around with the heat, the small iron, and really tacked all of this fabric down. And what that will do, obviously it shrinks the fabric some and it starts to pull the rest of it a little bit tight. Um, it's very, very minimal, but, that, but that's fine. Um, it's all going to get shrunk anyway. So this has all been ironed through, so to speak, into the underlying glue. And now I'm going to come back with my, my regular final glue, glue over top, wipe it down, you know, making sure that the, the this new top fabric is completely glued in place. So I'm going to do that now and then I can do the shrinking and then I can start on the uh, finishing tapes and uh, some of the reinforcement um, patches on the bottom where the uh, wing strut fittings and stuff like that poke through. Alright, moving on.